I'm gonna play Kassadin for 10 hours to see if he actually takes skill or not. First I looked at the most common items and runes for Kassadin. Most builds revolve around Rod of Ages and Archangel's Staff, you need these items for mana and survivability. The next items are usually Death Cap and Hourglass. Usually go Death Cap first if you're ahead and Hourglass if you need survivability and maybe Frozen Heart into a full AD team. Your last item can be Abyssal Mask for a little bit of extra survivability, Void Staff if you need a ton of magic pen, Shadow Flame for a good overall AP item and Morellos if you need healing reduction. Your boots are usually Sorcerer's Shoes but into full AD comps, Plated Steel Caps are great and into teams with a lot of CC, Merc Treads can also be very solid. And last, the runes are usually Electrocute because it's just the best overall rune, but First Strike does scale way better and Conqueror is better for longer fights depending on your build. To start things off, I hopped into a game with some friends, so that way if I happened to feed, nobody would get too mad. Luckily for me, I got an early gank, so there was no way I int now. No, I messed it up, come on. But it's fine. I decided to TP top and destroyed the 100 HP Mumu. Poor guy never stood a chance. Anyway, my Jin was kind of insane this game, basically one-shotting the entire enemy team while I kind of just stood there and soaked up some damage. Not trying to brag or anything, but I kind of won my first game on Cassidy ever. Also, can anyone explain why I can attack this inhibitor from so far away? Seriously, what the fuck is this? My next game, however, was a disaster. Around the 22 minute mark, I got two huge kills that were enough to bring me back into the game, and I knew that this was a game I could carry. Yeah, no, we immediately lost like a minute later. Also, I could not figure out how my ult flash failed. I literally went into the practice tool and practiced this exact play over and over and didn't mess it up a single time. Game 3 started off amazing. I canceled Katarina's ult with my Q and managed to get an early kill. Just to come back into lane and immediately kill her again, followed by a kill on Mundo too. Unfortunately, things started going downhill when I misjudged how far my ult was and I gave my shutdown to Trindamir. Followed by another death mid when Pantheon and I lost a 2v2. Eventually, it just got to the point where I died doing pretty much anything and once again, I was unable to carry the game. Either way, I was pretty proud of my performance and the fact that I was able to get ahead in the first place. So after my first three games, I realized I suck at Cassidy. I kept missing ults, I kept losing early lane, and apparently playing Cassidy makes me a racist? For the research segment, I watched Shock's Rank 1 Challenger Mid Guide for Cassidy because I not only wanted to know how to play Cassidy, but honestly, just how to play mid lane. From the guide, I learned a few things. One, Cassidy's passive makes him ghosted, which means he can walk through minions and characters. This actually helps his maneuverability in fights a lot, and I probably should have known this if I just read the ability. Two, his Q shield is instant even before your orb hits its target. This means it's easier to actually shield damage than I originally thought. And three, the only person that matters is you in this game. Basically, you never roam unless maybe you have your ultimate because if you do, you're gonna be so weak it'll probably end up like this and you'll lose a bunch of CS. Basically, do whatever you can to get through the laning phase. Don't roam, shield as much damage as you can, and just try to last hit until a big fight or you're level 11 when you can actually fight people. My last normal game started off a little weird. Oriana kind of just walked at me with no mana, so I used my Q to soak a little bit of damage and then just killed her 1v1. Then I died because Silas ganked at the perfect time right when I went in. Fuck me, man. A little later, I got another kill. I was too scared to do the ult flash combo that I messed up earlier, so I just flashed first. About a minute later, I TP'd bot and got a double kill. I actually blocked Silas's E with my ult here and saved Janet, which was sick as fuck, and I slowly finished him off. Around the 18 minute mark, I basically exploded their entire team and got a triple kill. But this was nothing compared to level 16 Cassidy, which I was about to experience for the first time. Yeah, after I hit level 16, the game was basically over. After my normal games, I came up with some goals for myself during this challenge. One, do at least one ult flash combo. Two, don't die more than two times in the laning phase. And three, try to hit level 16 every game because that shit was awesome. Going into the next hour, I was a little worried. Sure, losing lane in normals wasn't that big of a deal, but how hard would I get punished and ranked? Luckily, 
I wouldn't need to answer that question just yet because this game started off with an early kill. And things only got better after that. I got a few more kills bot lane. I didn't trust my ease damage here, but I probably would have killed Sorak without my ult. Fast forward about 20 minutes and our team got destroyed in a team fight and wanted to surrender, but they clearly hadn't noticed I was level 16 yet. So I just went bot and killed Vayne. Then I fucking exploded this poor Soraka, but was unable to catch Zillion who apparently can just turn into Sonic the fucking Hedgehog out of nowhere. Anyway, a little later there was a big fight at Dragon where I once again made Soraka's life a living hell and then proceeded to win the fight super hard. The final fight was basically just a stomp. Sion kinda walked past the tower with his 10 billion health or whatever and we just rolled them. Wait, what was that? Go back. Was that an ult flash to kill Soraka one final time? Honestly, this first ranked game was way better than I expected. Game six started off terribly. I was against a Pantheon who is not only super strong early game, but is also probably Kassadin's hardest counter. After some bad trades, I TP'd back to lane and tried to help a fight in the river and actually managed to get a kill. A few minutes later, Pantheon just kills me because I did not expect his damage. Gotta remember my Q only shields magic damage in the future. With my lane completely doomed, I decided to roam bot which actually ended up working out pretty well for me. Not so much for the rest of my team though. I didn't manage my ult's mana cost very well so I basically didn't get to ult this fight. That's something I'm gonna have to work on in the future. With my mid lane still kinda doomed, I decided to go bot again which resulted in one kill until Rengar decided to just go back in. I don't know if that was worth for him. Then Pantheon dropped Rift Herald mid so I immediately used my TP. I felt strong enough at this point to fight him and I actually won the 1v1, only dying to his ignite afterwards. But apparently that 1v1 meant nothing because a couple minutes later, Pantheon was strong enough to almost kill Sejuani and me. He just has so much damage even after I built two armor items. Eventually we get a pick on Teemo, get Baron, and a few minutes later we push and win the entire game. Two ranked games in and I was feeling pretty solid on Cassidy. Game 7 started off with another bad matchup until he decided to try to dive me out of nowhere and just died. Then I hit 6 and actually managed to kill Jace again, but out of nowhere I started having internet problems and just started disconnecting. I decided to take a break and see what was going on with my internet at the time, and because I didn't really play this game, I wouldn't count it towards this challenge. So the real game 7 was probably even worse than disconnecting. I got placed top so I decided to try the bruiser build with conqueror. It did not go very well. It wasn't all bad though, we got a good gank top which resulted in a few kills, followed by another fight right after which went eh, pretty well. I'm gonna be honest, this game went a lot better than I thought. Despite being top casted in, I was actually contributing in fights and I knew that we were going to outscale them. Eventually there was a huge fight that we totally dominated. Level 16 Cassidy strikes again and all we had to do now was not get caught, regroup and there was no way we would lose. But for some reason my team decided to try and fight without me after I killed Zerath and was trying to reset. I tried to save the base but in a panic I didn't use my Q on Katarina so I couldn't stop her ult and I just ended up dying. Was my pick troll? Absolutely. But was it my fault we lost? Definitely not. After two tilting losses back to back I was ready to start winning again. And the game started off great, somehow solo killing the Yasuo, and then I killed him again. I was a little nervous when his tornado somehow hit me, but it turned out to be a pretty good bait, I guess. Then Rumble and I killed Yasuo over, and over, and over again. Anyway, this game got really out of hand, so we kinda just steamrolled them in fights. Needless to say, the enemy team was pretty mad about it. Anyway, yeah, this game was a dub. Game 9 did not start off as well as the last game. Luckily my Braum came and saved my lane, but even then it was way too close. I did manage to secure a kill on the enemy Ezreal, but followed it up by immediately dying bot again. But in typical Cassidy fashion, out of nowhere I was just strong enough to delete the enemy Morgana and finish off the Malphite. I mean, look at this. I have three kills and I killed the Ezreal in four attacks. This cannot be balanced. Shortly after that kill, the enemy team just surrendered. They probably saw I hit level 16 and just said, fuck that. 
Up next, we have a total disaster. I randomly took a tower shot, which allowed Talon to just kill me in lane at level four. That one kill put Talon so far ahead, he just roamed around the map and got tons of kills. Even when I tried to help, I did more harm than good. Just then I realized they were trying to dive my Volibear top, so with my teleport I went top and I got a double kill which was enough to not only get me Rod of Ages, but bring me back into the game. Unfortunately, we got two more kills the entire rest of the game and we ended up losing in 20 minutes. Now that I was in the final hours of this challenge, I knew I was going to need to win these games. My laning and team fighting had both improved a ton and I was actually starting to feel really comfortable on Cassidy. Unfortunately, the game did not start off too great. But it's okay, all I need to do is not get tilted and remember how well I scale. Just one kill and I'd be back on track. There we go. Just like that, I finished my Archangel Staff and I was finally able to do some real damage. We won this game, but I was honestly a little disappointed in my overall performance. Luckily, I had a good team to carry me though, and we won the game. But I knew I was gonna have to play a lot better my last two games. Game 12 started off perfectly. I had almost 10 CS per minute and I managed to get an early kill to help me snowball. And the fun didn't stop there because I also went top and cleaned up another kill. Thanks to my great CSing and lack of deaths, by 20 minutes I had already finished two items and oh would you look at that, two more kills. This game was mine to carry and I know that I've said that before and immediately lost but I had a really good feeling about this game. Fuck. Nah, I'm just kidding. We absolutely destroyed this game. I was so strong that Nocturne and I could basically kill anyone who tried to come and fight us. We won this game and just like that, we were on our final game of the challenge. My last game actually started off kind of bad. I had MR in my runes because I thought I was gonna go against a Ziggs, so Neferi kind of had her way with me in lane. Luckily, I got a kill on Udyr in the jungle, which helped me catch up a bit and gave me blue buff. But I think the Udyr wanted revenge or something because he ganked my lane and barely saved the Nefiri. I was definitely a little tilted after that one. Oh my god, he was right there. A little later, Nefiri dove me again and I died. Nocturne was there to clean up the kill, I guess, but it wasn't great. Fast forward a little bit and we were down, but we were starting to scale. All of a sudden there was a huge fight at Baron. The fight was all over the place, but we managed to somehow go four for four as I narrowly escaped with my life at the end. A little later there was another big Baron fight and we actually managed to win this one and it immediately led us to getting Baron and another kill. All of a sudden it felt like this game was winnable even though it started off terribly. We finally started to scale and we were getting ready to make our final push. Wait. No, what are you guys doing? That's right, after all that, making a huge comeback, stopping their Baron, getting Baron ourselves, and winning a couple of key fights, we lost because Irelia and Swain just walked into the enemy jungle and died. In the end, I went from plat 2-0 LP to plat 1-0 LP and honestly felt really good on Cassidy. Do I think Cassidy is strong? 100% yes. He is a champion that as long as you don't lose too hard early, it can absolutely take over games. He also isn't very mechanically difficult. Just fight when your abilities are up, run like hell when they're down, and then go back in when they're up again. Seriously, in lower elo where people don't know how to close out games, this guy will be an absolute menace and scale every game. Let me know who you want to see next in the comments.